It's always been so incredibly interesting to me that there's so many different styles of hardcore gamers. There's the completionists that want to level up characters and find all the hidden items. There's people that like to be competitive online and just get the best scores against their other living opponents. There's people that like to try and track down and beat the toughest games on the planet. But then there's also just like cozy gamers that want to play a game on easy difficulty and enjoy a nice good story. And I think that all these different styles of gameplay, they definitely have their place. But what's interesting is that sometimes it feels like there are gamers that hate the idea of trophies or achievements. And it's now a major game developer has straight up said that trophies are bad for video games. And I want to talk about that. What's up gamers, Dreamcast guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. Now I'm obviously going to be incredibly biased in this video because I love trophies. I love getting platinums. I love popping achievements on my Xbox. But I do want to talk about this story because it really is something that I'm very passionate about. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. So starting things off, we're over here on PlayStationLifestyle.net and the guy who basically started the division over at Ubisoft says that trophies are bad for gaming. Now his exact quote is kind of bonkers. This guy actually did a bunch of design for stuff like Mirror's Edge. This dude is a guy who not only works on video games, he designs trophies, he designs achievements, and he says, unpopular opinion, achievements and trophies have been bad for gaming. Oh my god, this is so ridiculous. Achievements and trophies have been bad for gaming. It narrows games down, it disrupts and diverts attention, and it eats resources that could have been used to make the game better. Now, this has been met by an interesting amount of pushback. A lot of people have just been saying that this is just so strange. He said later on, he thinks of it as the fact that it's a reward mechanism that's best suited for some players, but it's one size fits all. So basically he feels like it makes games worse overall. So essentially what he's talking about is that when you put a game on the Xbox or the PlayStation, you have to, by necessity, in order to get your games put onto the platform, you have to design trophies for it. Now, a lot of times these have multiple tiers, bronze, gold, platinum, a bunch of stuff like that, where it basically is a bunch of different secondary objectives for the game itself, whether it is completing side quests or just sometimes competing in online races and stuff like that. Now he's basically saying the time it takes to make those trophies could be used to make more content for the game itself. But I would like to say my official disagreement with this is that honestly trophies and achievements are content. To me, it's incredibly entertaining to try and do all the different side stuff, to pop those trophies. It's cool to have this big, gigantic laundry list of extra additional activities. You know, I do beat a lot of games. In fact, everything I have right here, these are all games that I've already platinumed. Elden Ring, all the Final Fantasies, of course, things like Stray. I platinum a lot of freaking games. And to me, that creates more than just a sense of reward. It creates this deep sense of satisfaction that's just so fun for me. In fact, sometimes I'll just pop in a random game to get a couple random trophies, even if I'm not going to end up beating it or platinuming it. Yesterday, I was honestly having a very, very bad day because the trip to the dentist was very, very stressful. And I sat down and I started playing a random pinball game and I ended up playing it for like three hours and I got the platinum trophy and something about that really made my day better. <laughs> I know that probably sounds cheesy or, or too nerdy or something like that, but you know what? Sometimes just hearing that platinum sound pop makes you have that tiny little bit of extra encouragement of like, hey, you know what? I did something cool in a video game today. But I think a lot of people sort of share this sentiment. I've seen a lot of people talking about this over here on Twitter. Uh, now this is John Lineman. This guy is the king of uh, so much great deep dive technical analysis. He is one of the dudes that works at Digital Foundry. Man, it's an absolute genius. Well, he said this, I've said they're neither good nor bad in a larger sense. That's something that will vary from person to person. I generally ignore them, but they do not bother me. And it's in response to the fact that this guy is said that they're specifically 
that developer said they're bad for gaming, whereas he's saying that he considers it to be more neutral. Whereas Simpler is saying this, I think it shouldn't be mandatory. There are plenty of games that don't need them, and the creators would prefer not to implement them, but they're required by many platforms. Essentially, if you're putting out a game, since you have to put trophies into it, I do understand that if you're a tiny, tiny developer, some companies, like say you're somebody that's a five-man dev team trying to come out with an indie game, already putting your game on something like PlayStation already costs you tens of thousands of dollars just to get it onto the platform and you have to hope it sells that bit of extra work i understand why that might be a bit distracting when you're trying to worry about not just certification and approval but inventing trophies after the game is done there is however this strange extra group of gamers that feel like they're very very anti-achievement they're anti-trophy and a lot of them seem to be nintendo fanboys i'm not trying to single anybody out i'm not making any assumptions but no Nintendo console has ever had an achievement style system. And for me, I do wish they had that. I really like playing my Nintendo Switch, but I've seen people say essentially that like a game like Breath of the Wild is so beautiful. It's so big. It's so open. It feels like such a next generation idea for Zelda of just being so free. And people consider it to be restrictive if you're trying to play a game like that, which really encourages you to pick up random weapons and kill random monsters and explore random forests, if suddenly you have a literal checklist that says, find all 1,000 Korok seeds, find all 162 shrines, I feel like a lot of people start to go, okay, well, this sort of removes the magic. It removes the majesty. It removes a lot of that charm. If suddenly there is an actual bullet point of how much content exists in this world. Now for me, I think some of my favorite memories for games comes down to trying to accomplish creative trophies. Last year, one of my favorite trophies I popped of all the games, and it was an older game at the time, I randomly decided to try and platinum uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake. There is a trophy that requires you beat the game in less than 10,000 steps, which means you have to beat the game basically never backtracking. It means you have to memorize the game, you have to think efficiently about like, okay, I gotta pick up these two keys, go to the item box, get this special bit of acid, pick up the arm, get the gym, I thought it was such a freaking fun challenge to try and think so ahead of the game, to try and actually strategically get around. I decided to do it on the lowest difficulty with my infinite ammo guns, that way I would have extra inventory space, not carrying around a bunch of bullets. But even the idea of the trophy was so freaking creative. I love that. I think good trophies make a game infinitely better and i'm straight up about that i get a lot of different achievements and i have ever since achievements first came out back on the original xbox i mean one of the first games i ever got the full gamer score in was the original dead space and that was such a pleasant experience trying to beat that game on the hardest difficulty beating the game with just the plasma cutter I think, for the most part, the average gamer is not going to worry about platinum trophies, but everybody still is going to get that thrill at accomplishing something, of popping that next trophy, of, you know, wanting to try the game out on the hardest difficulty to possibly unlock that weird, hard-to-obtain little trophy at the end of it. I think, personally, that trophies are a net positive. Do I think they should be optional? Maybe. I do think in the circumstance when it comes to especially smaller developers, if you're not going to have enough budget, enough time, I mean, I think it's probably, if it's going to hurt the game to put in trophies, or if your game is one of those games that's just a free platinum trophy, there is stuff on the storefront, on the PlayStation Store, that are just called like free platinum trophy, that stuff is not only a scam, it definitely shows the flaws, the rough edges to the trophy charm. But I think I'm still on the side of loving achievements. I'm still on the side of loving trophies. I'm still on the side where they're more fun than weird. 
But what do you guys think about it? If you could, give me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. All right, uh, I'm going to get back to working on some stuff and getting ready for the next Platinum Trophy. <laughs>